you'd have to think that the bullying claims levelled at the Prime Minister by Liberal Senator Conchetta, fear of anti Wells, would have shocked and upset every member of the coalition. Some have described it as just an internal political sideshow. Others, the hijacking of a vote-grabbing budget. It is his way or the highway. An autocrat, a bully who has no moral compass. In my public life, I have met ruthless people. Morrison tops the list, followed closely by Hawke. Morrison is not fit to be Prime Minister. She did not miss. Now, since making those statements, every man and his dog within the media has been chasing the angry senator to explain because there is a major difference between being relegated on a Senate ticket and describing Scott Morrison's controlling behaviour on party pre-selections as bullying and then describing his general rapport with colleagues as bullying. We wait for that explanation. But it was enough to ignite a fire in Tasmanian Senator Jackie Lambie this morning. I can tell you what, he's probably one of the most unpleasant men I've ever had to sit in front of. He is a bully, uh, he is intimidating, uh, and that's the truth of the matter. And good on Connie for calling him out. You know, maybe the Liberals do view Senator Fear of Andy Wells' takedown of the PM as a major hijack of the budget and extremely damaging because out came a big gun today in the form of former Prime Minister John Howard who came to Scott Morrison's defence. He told the Sydney Morning Herald... I haven't seen any evidence that he, Mr Morrison, is a bully, that he's arrogant or any of that. Forceful? Well, anybody who gets to be the leader of a political party is forceful. Let's bring in One Nation leader Pauline Hanson on this. Pauline, you agree with both Conchetta, Fear of Andy Wells and Jackie Lambie, don't you? Well, I do. The fact is that he's, he is a bit of a bully and he is, he is arrogant. I've got to say, Chris, I hold... Um, they need three votes in the Senate and I hold two of those votes. I had a working relationship with Malcolm Turnbull. I could go to his office, I could talk to him. He was very obliging. I haven't had that experience with, with um, Scott Morrison at all. On one occasion, I took a businessman, it was arranged to actually go and speak to the Prime Minister with regards to cabotage, which is, which is foreign ships in Australia. But this man owns the only Australian rail line, freight line, left in Australia. Now, when I went into the Prime Minister's office, he said, I'm not meeting with him. I said, but it was arranged. No, I don't meet with lobbyists. I said, but he's not a lobbyist. I said he employs 2,000 Australians and pays $180 million a year in taxes. And I said, this was arranged. She said, no, I'm not meeting with lobbyists. He can go and meet with the Deputy Prime Minister's office after the arrangements were made. I wasn't impressed with that at all. I've been in meetings with him, not as Prime Minister, but as Treasurer, with another minister around the table, where it got quite heated. They weren't happy with me because they couldn't get my vote and I was debating them over the issue. He thumped the table, the other minister swore at me. The minister then went home, told his wife that he swore at me, apparently. He went and told his wife, and he turned up in my office the next morning to apologise to me for actually swearing at me. <laughs> so that my staff were absolutely gobsmacked when we walked out of that meeting of the attitude of the then treasurer, which was Scott Morrison. So are you There's saying it's... Instances but are you, as well. you said it was a bit of a bully, he's a bit of a bully, is it bullying, Pauline, or is he just being, as John Howard says, forceful? Forceful? Look, I can be forceful as well. You know, his, his attitude is like when I went up, when I was fighting for the backpack attacks, all right? So yeah. it was a consensus of opinion, about 15%. I went to see him. We were at the lodge at the Christmas dinner. Anyway, I went up to see him and said, you won't get it through at 19%. He said, well, I'm not dropping it. And I said, well, you won't get it through and it's important to the farming sector. By the time I finished with him, he said, OK, 17%. That's it. Well, I went 15 feet. I spoke to Turnbull. Guess what? The next morning, Morrison was on my phone to me. He said, OK, you got your 15%. It's just the sheer arrogance that I have with him. Even in the last election, when he put us behind the Liberal and Labor, I had mm. dinner with him in September. And I said to him, why did you do it? Oh, well... You know, I had to shore up my votes in, in Victoria, and that's why I've done it. It's like, Chris, I have actually worked very closely with the Liberal Party in the last six years because they are government putting up legislation. I'm not in their, their pockets, so people are saying, but it's about I've yep. improved their legislation. 
you know, it wasn't their policy for the apprenticeship scheme. It was mine. Yeah. For two and a half years, I kept arguing with him. They only put it up because it was part of a deal that I was doing with them. Guess what? He's, he's out there blowing his trumpet and all the rest of it about the apprenticeship scheme. He never wanted it. That's mm. because of me that we've actually got the apprenticeship scheme. Okay. It's been in the industrial relations. You know, the casualisation of people to full-time employment after 12 months? That was, again, one nation. That we got that up, Malcolm and I got that up, them to take on that policy as part of the industrial relations. You know, he's, he's such an arrogant man, he really is, to not have that working relationship with me. And another thing, Kimber, about the nuclear waste plant that they want to build in Victoria, mm. in South, South, South Australia, Australia, I should say. You know, yeah, he rang up. Why, why aren't you meeting with the mayor? I said, well... Malcolm's meeting with them. I've met with them. I mean, you're not changing my opinion. They want to push through legislation rather than putting in regulation because under regulation they could be taken before the courts and questioned over it. And I don't think it was a good thing to put the, the nuclear waste plant where they wanted to put it in Kimber. OK. So I haven't had there. a good working relationship with him. OK. All I'm right. going to leave it there. I appreciate your honesty, Pauline. Thank you for your time.